Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are all well today. We are going to talk about all kinds of good stuff today, but I thought I would just give you a another tour, another follow-up on our progress. It's coming along nicely, and um, really excited to get this listed for sale. So let me just show you a little bit of the Mountain Man's handiwork. Good morning, Miss Tammy. All right, here we go. I'm trying to remember last week if this was even in place at all. I know he was working on it, but the railing is in. It does not have the top cap on it yet, but um, this full side is in. We've got this side here in, lots of junk and clutter still, but beyond the clutter is beauty, and that applies to all of us. But right oh, there... Yes, the beauty. <laughs> there is his handiwork from yesterday, and I uh, really like the curl on the end. Um, really gonna look sweet when this is finished. I should have turned the light on, that would be helpful. I'm trying to remember where the switch is. Isn't that funny? We haven't had switches for a, a long time. I got it, I got it. I got the switch. I was turning on that one. Yeah. And today, good morning, Deborah. And it's not something as noticeable, but we got all the painting done this weekend. And I am hugely and immensely celebrating that because three weeks ago, I would not have been able to paint due to the chemicals. So that was huge. So we got paint on the walls that require paint. The stucco wall, sorry, is started. So you can see what that's going to eventually look like with the, let me see if I can brighten that up a little bit. It's a little dreary today, eh, not a whole lot there, but um, that is going to resemble the old stucco. So that's looking pretty good too. And really excited about that. Good morning, Chad. But yes, uh, what's that? The man says I'm supposed to show Chad the handrail. That was what he did yesterday, Chad, since you just popped on. I was just showing that. And then I don't remember last week if this was in place or not, but it is in place now. I hear that, Chad. You're going to love today's talk. So we hey, will be brother. praying for you. Hey, brother. <laughs> he said he's down and out today, so we will be praying for you. You'll come back around. <laughs> She, she said in her talk, she was going to do a talk today on... I am. It? You are. I am. We're going to keep on keeping on. And... and well, no, we're no, going to... We're going to... We're going to... Stay calm, calm and carry and on. Carry on today. And I was going to, if she didn't say it... Well, I was, I'm not there yet. Oh, well, you were going to be in your office. So, right. anyway. so you're going to do it now? So... Calm! <laughs> I am calm! <laughs> That's what it's been like here the last couple of days. We're tiring out. We're tiring out. This is a lot of work. You can see that we've been busy, you know, just taping this stuff. If any of you paint, I mean, it just takes, it's tedious work. It's, it's, and we're tired. We're tired. So this is what he's doing today. He's in here painting. Show him the little gadget. I don't know if everybody knows about that thing, but I love it. Don't get it on the camera. That is an edger, and I've had that for forever, probably 15 plus years. That's old. Yes, it is. Hush up, boy. <laughs> but that thing is awesome. Makes it really nice to go around the edges to paint in odd places that you can't get a roller. It and does. It's it's really nice. Go ahead, and demonstrate. Um, I've never I never used one of these before. Just always used a a paintbrush. Oops. Helps if I move the camera with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a paintbrush in the corner, you know. But man, that that thing works works awesome. Yeah. So we had we had the shower stall to do. That's what I was working on, and just trying to get in there under the railing so we didn't take the rail off, and it was just tricky. So that thing was a lifesaver. But this is going to all get uh, trim work in today and this room will be finished so I'm really really excited um, and it will help uh, lift the morale here just because like I said we're getting tired hello Pamela thanks for joining all right so 
that's, I mean, you can see there's still junk everywhere. We're going to do the bathroom and then we're going to do the loft and then we're going to move into the kitchen and get the cabinets in the kitchen. So beyond the junk, like I said, there is beauty and we'll touch on that more because that applies to us all as well. But I just love the railing. Gosh, it just looks so amazing. And then um, if you can imagine this, sometimes people need to you know, visual thinkers. So you may not be able to envision this, but right there will be a railing and on that far side to finish the wall will be the railing and then the can lights will be in there. What we are going to do on the flooring up here is we are going to paint the, the plywood floor. I got a deck paint that is a really nice chocolate brown and I just thought that would really make things pop because we've got a lot of light wood What's real neat, I don't know if you can see it on this post, I'll try to show you without tripping over all the trim boards that he has here. Um, that pine post has a lot of blue in it. So all the, the uniqueness of the wood and, the, and all the logs from our property, you know, seeing the edging on there just looks really awesome. Oh, awesome, glad to have you joining, Brian. Yeah, guys, give me a shout out. Where, who else watching? Where are you from? Um, add that in there because it's always nice to know who's in the background watching. Now, my office is still a mess. I did have it cleaned up, but I keep tripping over this uh, lumber, so I started moving things around again. So it doesn't look any tidier. I'm going to pop this around. Okay, sorry to scare you. All right. And I'm, ah, like I said, tripping over. There we go. Tripping over lumber, tripping over stuff. Oh, my goodness. But progress is being made and you know just like you guys stuff happens um, things change yesterday I was on the couch all day with a bucket and a blanket and close to the bathroom thankfully I did not give it to him um, but stuff happens there's always something going to happen it's just always as I say how you maneuver the circumstances and your outlook on the circumstances and you know we are tiring and we are both tiring so it gets hard because you you know usually we're this way not down at the same time so we are in, able to keep each other going uh, lift each other up which is huge and that's what we need to be for each other that's um, exactly what a help meet is and um, if you'll bear with me a second here, I just want to send two invites out to people that have struggles getting onto the live video. But um, tell me what you guys are up to in your neck of the woods. I have a lot of celebrations to share with you. As I shared, I was able to paint Saturday. The Mountain Man and I were able to paint together. Um, three weeks ago, I would not have been able to paint. I would not have been able to be around the, the chemicals. So God is good, and I've got a lot more to share. But share with me whether it's ups or downs, what's going on in your life, and um, what are your celebrations, what are, what are your struggles, because it's always good to be able to um, share those. You know, when a perfect example of that is, you know, when somebody is healing, um, the power of touch and the power of... Um, kind words and love can actually improve your healing and the same goes for our everyday um, encounters we have the ability to um, help others by sharing just simply some of our celebrations and um, also ah it's gonna be loud of our um, our struggles too because people feel alone when they're dealing with things in their life and when they realize that other people are surfing the same thing or something similar or, or their life, you know, although it looks really peachy, they are actually struggling through stuff. You know, that really, it, it helps people's morale to change. Okay, Pamela says, okay, Pamela says, 
new beginnings with a question mark. Did you move or are you still in the same place? I've been MIA from so many blogs since my husband passed away. Oh, so sorry, dear. And the Lord gave me a new spouse, formerly last name was Nelson. Okay, all right. Recognizing. And no, um, new beginnings are is our theme for the year um, in that... Every day is a new beginning. Every day we have the ability to grab our bootstraps and make our lives different. And um, through the new beginnings, I've been touching on all different types of topics that pertain to embracing a life we want, embracing um, a new beginning every day. The mountain man is standing here. It's like, did you need you something? Yeah. You're getting trembled. Oh, you're. No. Okay. Um, you don't have to turn the camera. You don't have to. Okay. He's the man behind, the voice behind the camera. Go ahead. Um, I just went down there painting, and I felt that God wanted me to do something. Um, I, I just felt that this morning that needed to uh to pray for chad so um if we could take a second and just pray for him okay. um, sure father god we come before you this morning um thank you for all your blessings and your mercy to us uh, each and every day um we just pray that you would uh be with Chad today, lift his spirits and give him strength for his day. Just uh, guide him and direct him and encourage him. And just uh, all those who are struggling out there, uh, we pray that you would just guide them and give them strength and wisdom. Just help them through each of their situations and guide and direct them. Um, we praise you for what you're going to do. Um, there's many things in store for each one of us. Uh, just uh, continue to encourage each one of us and, and guide us. I love you and ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I never know what kind of surprises are going to happen when he walks in my office. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was a very nice one. Not that the others aren't nice either, but I never know what I'm going to get when he's heading my direction. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela, um, I, I, I expressed my condolences, but at the same time in reading what you uh, wrote, congratulations also um, that you have a new spouse, and welcome back. And Chad, amen. We got your back, brother. And um, if any of the rest of you need prayer, um, that is something that we are very... Um, honored to do for others. There is a prayer list below of others that have requested prayer and that are in need of prayer. And, um, you know, we all struggle. We all go through stuff. You don't have to share your circumstances by any means because as long as we're praying for you, God knows the circumstances. So if you need prayer, don't hesitate to ask. If you uh, need somebody to talk to or you would rather personal message me or email, you can reach me at survive at treyorwilderness.com. But we also have a really amazing, amazing group of prayer warriors here. So um, they are always very willing to quickly jump on that and pray for you guys as well. Um, Penny, welcome from New Hampshire. Glad to have you. And Brian is from Port St. Lucie in Florida. And I'm so glad you're joining me. Brian always has very good things to add to the conversation. So I'm glad to see him joining us. Um... Okay, so I'm just catching up on the comments. All right, so let's see. My celebrations. Okay, I prayed, and this, this, this prayer, the answer to this prayer touched me more than any of the big, amazing things God has been doing in my life, in addition to healing me. Um, one of the things that I asked God to show me before we leave this property is moose and elk in our yard but I specifically asked that him to show me that right before we sell the house moose and <laughs> so 
Saturday, I'm standing at the kitchen window with my coffee cup in my hand and said, no stinking way, and then just froze there. Mountain man staring at me and looking at me and going, get your camera. There's a moose in my yard. Now, you'd think that being that we live in Idaho and there's moose and elk everywhere, that I'd have seen them in the yard already. But what happens is they've been skirting our property. We will be here nine years on the tw uh, 21st of May. And they, they leave their scat and tracks right on the edge of our property line. Like they know where it's at. But they've never been in our yard that we've seen. But we see them in the clear cut right 50 yards out of our, our door. You know, we've seen them close, but just not in the yard. And that personal prayer touched me more than anything else. For, for starters, that I asked for it specifically right before our house sells, which would be a miracle in itself if this just sold without listing it and everything else. So um, help us pray for that. And just to see it, they're so majestic. They're such big animals, and they are really good eating. The mountain man got his back in 2013. And uh, so it was just really, really neat to see such a big animal standing right outside my kitchen window. Just very amazing. Um, I put pictures of that on Instagram, and I also shared a bunch of the pictures of the house and different things on Instagram. So if you're not following us there, you can uh, check us out over there as well. But um, another celebration is that I have spent two full days in my garden, and I have been unaffected as well. So for those of you that are joining and, and haven't heard, um, I am on a healing journey. I am healed. I have to continue on this healing journey for the next six months while I reprogram my brain. I'm not going to say any more because I can't talk about it right now. Um, down below, um, you will find all the information on it. On, on what I'm doing and how I am healing myself. So, bear with me a second here. Okay. Um, so, that is a huge celebration after a three-year journey with my health to be in a situation where I can do these things again. It has been um, really difficult when you lose those abilities that you're so naturally accustomed to. And um, to live life not feeling like I need to live in a bubble is tremendous because I've felt that way a lot over the last three years because of how affected I was by things. But it was because my brain was stuck in a trauma loop, in a fight and flight loop. Um, so that's all the more I'm going to say because I can feel the top of my head getting warm. Um, so I am in the process of training my brain. Um, Penny says, Hubs and Kiddo are playing hooky and spending the day together in New York. Concerned both sets of parents are struggling with big health issues. Okay, we will be definitely be praying for them. Nice that they're in New York. Uh, I've been to New York City. I get to say I was there. I enjoyed my time there. I don't want to go in a city that big ever again. <laughs> but I understand health issues. And um, Penny, check out the description below. I don't know what their health issues are. And I can't discuss that kind of stuff right now. But down below is a big list of the health issues that can be aided by the... Um, DNRS that I am taking part in. There is also links to the program and the book. Um, so check it out for sure because there is a lot of things that is in our environment, in our food, um, in our surroundings that can create a lot of the health issues, a lot of these trauma loops, um, a lot of these struggles. So definitely check it out. So, you know, I know each and every one of you have been experiencing some form of a struggle over the last week or so. Um, I know many of you specifically have, and you're not alone. Like I said, we've been really tiring out here. It gets hard when you're exhausted to think straight and to do things. And when you're going through different struggles, you know, we, we really need to keep pushing ourselves forward. I did a podcast, two of them actually, that will be going live this Friday. One is on not sweating the small stuff. And the other one is how to get through the big struggles in life. Now, we've been on this journey for three years. You know, there's others that have, uh, uh, and biblically, there are many who have gone through 40 years of struggles. So that's hard to imagine, you know, when you really think of it and put it into perspective when, you know, we have a day that's off. But 
but those days that are off are legitimate. They are days that are off and it's hard to regroup. And, you know, the enemy always loves those situations, those days when we are down or when he has an opportunity to get a foothold. So I've talked about that before, you know, be aware that he is whispering in your ear. Be aware of that and, and send him back where he belongs. But the trick to progressing through life and learning to be able to um, keep calm and carry on is first and foremost our faith. I, I will bank on that. Faith is the most important aspect of our day-to-day -day and our abilities to find joy in, in the mire. And the other thing is perseverance. Those two things go hand in hand. And when you can hit a point in your life where fear and worry um, get pushed aside and you really don't feel them and you focus strongly on your faith, um, it's an, inc it's an incredible journey. So I've been encouraging people to keep pulling in on your faith because that's where it's at. And even though we have strong faith, you know, um, Chad said he's down and out today. He is one of the most faithful people I know in, in addition to us. And, um, we all have those moments, no matter how strong our walk is with God, no matter how faithful we are, we hit those points in our day to day, in our life where we just, we, we can't seem to get our, our head in the right direction. And it takes practice. It takes constant practice. Not only should we view our perseverance as our perseverance in our circumstances, but our perseverance to hang on to what God offers us and to hang on to his truth and to, and to be able to constantly learn to refocus our current position, our current place, our current um, feelings into something better. One of the things that I have to do as part of my daily training for the next six months is constantly being aware of where my head is, what is in my head, what I'm thinking, what I'm saying, what I'm, um, how I'm feeling, and um, remove all negativity because the power of laughter and positive thoughts, which I have been talking about for three years, is something that can change the brain. The more you're in that state, the more we can change our brain to stay in that state and to acknowledge that as something that um, we want. And I'm, I created a folder um, on my phone, um, actually in Dropbox, that feeds on my phone with all the photos that give me joy, that make me laugh. I watch videos, you know, when I feel myself in a really weird spot. I watch like a two minute video of these babies laughing. It brings me to tears that I'm laughing that hard. No matter how many times I watch it, it's really funny. Um, but finding things like that, that we can put into our lives that are there to, at, at, at the snap of a finger, that when we need them, they're there for us. Um, that's how much of a constant effort we need to be in not only for our well-being, but our perseverance towards looking toward God. And I really believe that that is the key. The key is our faith, our strong faith and trusting the outcome of any circumstance, any circumstance, no matter how small or how drastic. Right now, I am watching Kim. Um, her husband, Martin, is the one we've been praying for. He had a heart attack while jogging with his daughter and ended up in a coma. He's been in a coma, I believe, almost two months now. It's pushing two months. And um, he is starting to react to stimuli and everything. Um, he's, he's following people's voices. He's still in a coma. But he is a, a, he's a miracle. They don't understand. The doctors do not understand. And I've said all along that the miracle is going to be that when he wakes from that coma, he's going to be healed. But I'm watching his wife walk this out. 
and it's amazing and I always hope and pray that while we're walk, walking our circumstances out and being transparent and being real that you guys see something similar it is amazing to watch somebody with such strong faith be unbreakable in those situations where the rest of the world would be on their knees that is a warrior that is powerful powerful stuff and that is inspiring stuff and it's just awesome awesome to watch she posted a picture the other day on her Facebook page of her husband Martin who is still in the coma like I said but they had him propped up in bed and his daughter had her prom her senior prom and they took pictures there and she said that she managed to hold it together and so did the daughter I sat there bawling because that's just so amazing you know and, and he had a smile on his face his eyes are open um, but he's just he's in a coma and um, it's just pretty amazing to see how God works and just to, to know that God is always there and even when you can't feel him to trust that he is there you know I talk about you know sweating the small stuff so often we allow that small stuff to start out like a little seed and it's like a snowball the more you think about that little nothingness it rolls and it rolls and it rolls and it ends up being this big disaster where you are planning and and dictating and determining what's gonna happen to something that you can't control to something that's very little in the big scheme of things and we waste our lives and our time and our energy and our abilities on that small seed of destruction that small seed of something that really doesn't matter and I want to encourage you guys to look past those small things laugh at them I have learned to laugh at so much and you know what it makes life so enjoyable when you can look past the little stuff and then know that the big stuff that you're dealing with there's a plan there's a much greater plan there's a plan that you're going to walk out that's going to be bigger and better than you could have ever imagined but it's hard to keep calm and carry on it is a hard thing it is a hard thing learning to redirect ourselves and um, for me I've got a you know when something starts to occur in my body and I realize that it's my brain that's incorrect that it's giving me a false signal and I am able to tell it that it's a false signal and the pain goes away that's pretty powerful that's pretty powerful stuff and uh, Brian that is joining us inspired next week's um, next week's uh, lesson which will be natural healing and supernatural healing because you know although I am learning this process from a human being who learned the body enough to realize that I have the abilities within myself to to retrain it and to remove chronic pain and stuff a lot of stuff I will be so anxious when I can talk about this more when I start to talk about it I can I can my my body reacts to it so I got to be careful but that our bodies are made in such a way that we have those abilities to retrain it you know that that simple process is so amazing that moose in my yard was so amazing and what's really cool is when you can stop looking at the small stuff and learning that although the big stuff is hard and I realize that I'm gonna have to redirect myself some days that there's a bigger plan out there and that when we see those little miracles along the journey those are a great tool to keep pushing us forward and to keep helping us to stay calm and keep moving on I went for a walk Monday my, my dog and I got out I've been promising her um, we've been doing these short jaunts mile mile or two I like to do a five mile walk 
part of also retraining the brain is doing different things and messing with it a little bit, if you will. I've been writing with my left hand. It's atrocious, but I'm working on it. Um, so my, my brain is like confused at all this new stimuli. So when we walked the other day, I walked another trail as well. Um, I, once it starts getting drier, I start hitting the woods. But right now I'm walking on the pass and the trails because it's not so muddy up to my eyeballs. I saw about 16 hearts that day. I took a picture of a couple of them. But it just makes me laugh. For those of you that know me, I see hearts all the time. Everywhere. I'll be hiking and there'll be a mud puddle and a frothy heart in the middle of it. The other day I was walking and there was a heart-shaped rock the size of my pinky. I caught the tip of my pinky. I caught a glimpse of it, my boot went on it, and it was a, a soft uh, sandstone and it cracked when I stepped on it. But just the fact that I saw it and just the fact that God blesses us with these things and, it, and, and he, He's blessing you with stuff every day too. It's just a matter of if we learn to see it. And I just love that. I love that God shows me the hearts, that God shows the mountain man eagles. I see eagles on occasion too. That was something I used to see, but it's really something very dominant in his life. So I know I'm jumping around a lot here, but the, the thing is, we have abilities to continue to keep calm and carry on. I'm going to read this to you. Acts 13, 43. Continue in the grace of God. It's called Keep Calm and Carry On. In the days leading up to World War II, the British government commissioned a series of posters. The idea was to capture encouraging slogans and distribute them throughout the country. Capital letters in a distinct typeface were used and a simple two-color format selected. The only graphic was the crown of King George VI. The first Whoop, I hit a button, sorry. There we go. The first poster was distributed in September of 1939. Your courage, your cheerfulness, your resolution will bring us victory. Soon thereafter, a second poster was produced. Freedom is in peril. Defend it with all your might. These two posters appeared on railroad platforms and in pubs, stores, and restaurants. A third poster was created, but it was never distributed. More than 2.5 million copies were printed yet never seen until nearly 60 years later when a bookstore owner in Northeast England discovered one in a box of old books he had purchased at an auction. It read, Keep Calm and Carry On. It bore the same crown and style of the first two posters. It was never released to the public, however, but held in reserve for an extreme crisis such an as an invasion by Germany. The bookstore owner framed it and hung it on the wall. It became so popular that the bookstore began producing identical images of the original design on coffee mugs, posters, and postcards. It's the same message Paul and Barnabas brought to the first Christians in Antioch. Continue in the grace of God. Or in other words, keep calm and carry on. And like I said, it's not the easiest task at times. And I shared this on Instagram. I will share this on the comments below when we're done here. But it's a good reminder for us to have in our forefront to remind us that when we are focusing on the wrong stuff, that there are simple turnarounds to these things. We can and we do have the power to catch ourselves um, in these low places and to try to refocus ourselves from a negative place to a joy-filled place. And it's a, it's a hard process, but yet it's a simple process because we know individually what gives us joy. We know throughout our past moments that have given us um, great laughter and people in our lives that give us those same things. And one of the, the uh, projects I had to do was to come up with those things and to write about those things and to reflect on those things. And, you know, I talk about not going backwards. And that's not really looking in the past because what you can do is focus on those great events that gave you joy, that gave you laughter, that helped make you who you are today. And then think about 
what it was in those events that that did that to you and that empowered you and and then take yourself to a future moment where you're going to be that you know for us you know there's been so many joys here on this homestead living in that wall tent for eight and a half months while we built our house was the most amazing time in my life hands down the most amazing time in my life I had very little I had a rubber made tote with very small effects of <laughs> of my existence everything else was in a storage shed and waking up to dirt under my feet and I realized that in recapturing those moments to me it is the simplicity and I talk about it a lot but when you think about it you can really hone in on what it was that gave you the joy and it explains to me why I seek such a simpler life and why I seek an even simpler life than what we live now so to be able to go through those times that I experienced here and just relish those moments of joy and then envision what my life is going to be like moving ahead because I know that the adventure ahead is going to be bigger and grander than what I've experienced here because God is leading our life and I trust the outcome I trust wherever he's taking us and right now we don't know that um, our plan when this sells is to set up a tent pack up all our belongings and sit there for however long it takes for God to give us some solid direction because we found over and over again in our lives that the more we let God lead instead of leading ourselves um, the more amazing it is uh, oftentimes we try to lead on our own and um, we take things back that we give to God and uh, we try to go through tough times by ourselves and it never really amounts to much, right? So how many of you can relate to being able to think back on fond things and to also look back and see the direction that God took you in and also to be able to say that what he gave you after an awful experience was bigger and better than you could have ever imagined. I can do that multiple, multiple times. And like I've said, the hard things I've gone through in my life are things that I would never wish to not have experienced. Those experiences made me strong. Those experiences made me a warrior. And when we are on these paths, you know, um, when the enemy starts flaring up and giving us adversity, that's when we, our warriors, should kick in and we realize that we are on the right path because those conflicts indicate that we are on the right path. And I don't know, when you just look at the whole big scheme of things, you, to me, it's very easy to look past that little stuff and to, to keep calm and to carry on. And I think that that is a good word and I think that it's very true in um, you know what Paul and Barnabas did and it's something that we can continue to do in our own journey but something that we need to constantly remember is that continue in the grace of God you know there's going to be tough days there's going to be days where we have a whole day scheduled with a lot in it like yesterday and I ended up on the couch and you know you learn over time to redirect yourself and not get caught up in the depressing aspect of it that you're sick and you're on the couch but to use your time wisely I have a huge list of things that I want to do and those are moments when I can do them when I'm not napping I did take a nice power nap and that was good too which I also talk about and that's something that I have on my day-to-day -day schedule that if it hits me that I need one I take one so Keeping calm and carrying on is an important aspect because the more we get stuck in our struggles, the more stress we add to our lives. And I, I kind of like that I have stress meters in my body. Um, like I said earlier, the top of my head was getting hot. That's an indicator to me that I am talking um, too much about what I'm doing with my health. But... I also have other meters that I can feel when I'm too stressed. 
I'm supposed to be in a stress-free environment. Doing what we are doing right now is not stress-free. So I need to engage in monitoring my levels of stress. My neck muscles get tight. My chest muscles get tight. My back of my neck gets tight. So when I feel that setting in, I need to do something about it. And you too have those meters. It's just whether you are conscious of them or not. I have become very conscious and very in tune with my body and how it reacts to things over the last three years um, as a result of my illness. So um, I'm really happy about that because when stress sets in, we need to be smart enough to disengage it. And that might mean that we need to disengage from the negative stimuli that's creating it. Unfortunately, sometimes for me that's working on my computer and since I've got a lot of web work, I can't do that. But I can stop and I can meditate and I can stop and take a walk and come back to what I'm doing. So one of the biggest things I have found as a um, stepping stone in addition to my faith and my perseverance is being smart enough to um, monitor myself and my surroundings and know when I need a break. And we've talked about that a lot in the very beginning of our new beginnings. Um, Penny, I believe it was you or it might have been um, Pamela that asked about the new beginnings. Um, the, sorry, I'm scouring and I can't talk and do that at the same time. Okay, we have a lot of spammers out there today, so um, they seem to be uh, jumping on a lot more. So if you see comments that are distasteful, you are able to block them. Feel free to do so. Lori, I'm glad to have you joining me. And um, Brian says... Yes, the negative, no matter what it is about, it is like a poison. Oh my goodness, is it ever. Even a small amount of negative can create stress and anxiety, which no one understands all the effects of today. Stress can even cause shortness of breath, which I found out just recently, something I have never, ever had. Yeah, um, it is incredible. And there are different levels of stress, because I've gone through levels of stress, um that my body reacted to differently. And then there is negative stress. And it does, it affects our bodies in such incredible ways. It opens doorways to um, poor health and um, chronic issues. So it's really important that we learn to tune in to our bodies. Our bodies will tell us everything we need to know. It will crave certain foods. It will... Um, be exhausted and express to us that we need to seek rest. Um, it will let us know when we are deficient in things. So, good morning, Ashley. So it's important, and good morning, Charles. So it's really important that we pay attention to what our bodies are telling us and to the levels of stress we have in our life. Yesterday, I shared a YouTube video. Um, I don't remember what it was titled. It was a TEDx. But I, I, the comment I put on it is some food for thought. If you haven't watched that, I want to encourage you to watch that. It falls in the theme of our new beginnings, but it was really powerful and very inspiring. And it talks about the choices we have in our life. And, you know, everything we do is a choice. We have the choice to redirect ourselves or stay stuck in a rut. We have the ability to walk away from stresses and, and to turn them around. We have the ability to slow ourselves down and pay better attention to what is going on in our lives and our bodies. Um, and we have ultimately have the ability to choose what we want for our lives and what we don't want for our lives. And we neglect to realize that and we, I've even noticed it with all the web work that I've gotten, um, I'm, I'm falling back into a pattern. And, and that's something that our brain is really good at also, is that um, our brain wants to go back to its comfort and its comfortable patterns, even though they might be bad for us. Uh, 
in my circumstance, that is going to be the reason I am focusing so hard at keeping things um, moving forward and creating a new pattern in my brain. Um, so we have a tendency to fall back into patterns. Um, example, my computer and the web design work. I get caught up in that and I get really into it and I'm really designing, I'm really programming and I'll look down at the clock and it's 6.30 at night. You know, he's still working out there, but our goal has been to stop working at 4.30 and give ourselves a break, uh, focus and rest on ourselves. Chad, have a great day. Love you and praying for you, ma'am. Take care. Um, so the pattern I'm falling back into is that I am getting too glued to that machine and I don't want to be. I want to do my job, but I don't have to work 12 hours a day. I need to remember what I wanted for myself for this year and the goals that I've set for myself and the schedule I've set for myself and to take breaks and to um, go for my walks and to take care of myself. So when things happen, in our lives, whether it's sickness, whether it's family issues, um, but we start dealing with things and we start to pattern back like that. So that's one of the things that I've been really talking about this year is in the new beginnings is reflecting and remembering what we want out of life and to stay focused on those because we are going to redirect. Things are going to come up. Things are going to pull us away. Things are going to, um, throw things in an upheaval from time to time. And that's when we need to be smart enough and in tune enough to pull ourselves back out of that place and to remember to focus on what we want. And the more we do that, the less chance of falling back into those patterns. Um, it's just like putting up a stop sign. You know, when you, uh, that's a great visualization when you catch yourself doing something that uh, was a previous pattern that you didn't like or when you're thinking about the small stuff and you're getting yourself all riled up, just hold up a stop sign in your mind and, and stop yourself, blatantly stop yourself. There have been times where I tell myself to stop. You know, okay, that's it. That's, you know, I'm doing something I don't want to be doing. Stop. There are many ways we can keep calm and carry on. But it, it is something that we need to instill in ourselves and that we need to want bad enough to be able to change our our situations our circumstances even if it's just you know an hour out of your day that got thrown off kilter we have the ability to alter that and to redirect that and to not hang on to it like i said you know uh sweating the small stuff is just like a seed that's got stuck in in a snowball and it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger the more we think about it. So learning to turn those things off, learning not to sweat the small stuff, and learning not to think and harbor on things that um, are, are a struggle for us. Um, keep losing signal. Sorry, I have to sign off. No worries, Penny. You can always watch the replay. It, it isn't as sporadic. It plays nice. So, And it also ends up on YouTube for those of you that are having struggles. You can also watch these on YouTube. Sorry that you're having struggles. It's a cloudy day, so it's looking good on my end, but I never know what you guys are going to have. So have a great day, Penny, and thank you for joining me. So let me jump back here. There were a couple things that... Um, I had listed here and I'd like to to just read one of them yeah these were these were some verses that really resonated with me um, 2nd Peter 1:10. so dear brothers and sisters work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen do these things and you will never fall away and I, I think that as we walk through these hard moments and we, we keep strong faith and we keep our perseverance, um, that is something where we prove that and we show that and we are a light to others. Like I said in the very beginning of all this, you know, um, choose 
choose to share your testimonies, choose to share your celebrations, and choose to share your struggles. Um, by sharing your struggles um, and even how you've overcome them is a great testimony and a great way to help others. Um, this is another really good one. Um, this is important when you're in these ruts and you're stuck and you're trying to keep, you know, to keep on and stay calm and carry on something that we forget to do and we have to remember that in Luke 11 9 through 10 and so I tell you keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for keep on seeking and you will find keep on knocking and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds and to everyone who knocks the door will be opened we have to remember to call on him um, we are living on a planet that is occupied by the enemy and because God is being removed from everything, um, it's not a standard process for him to be present. We need to call on him and we, we need to remember to um, thank him when we're going through the good stuff and call on him when we're going through the bad stuff. We need to be present and, and calling on him all the time. We tend to um, lean on him more when we are going through our struggles. but. Through the process I've gone through, I've learned that my day-to-day, -day, I need him in it every day. Um, he makes my days grounded. Um, he gives focus to my days. He helps me be productive. And he helps me to uh, lean on him um, more than on myself. So it's important that we remember that we have that ability. And the other thing is that um, I love this one, and you've all heard it, I'm sure, many times, but Jeremiah 29, 11, and for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. So if you are in a low place, remember that, you know, God isn't going to give you something that's negative. Um, that's the enemy whispering in your ear, and uh, that God has great plans for all of us individually. And those plans are going to be amazing. So hold tight to that. Those, these, are, these are words that we can resonate with and meditate on. And that they are words that are true and that give us a, a footing. And I, I want you guys to remember that. It's so important when we're going through these struggles, regardless what they are. And, you know... It's hard to keep calm and carry on. It, when things are falling apart, it's hard to do that. But like I said in the beginning, with a strong faith and perseverance, and a perseverance that's not only pushing forward in your circumstances, but a perseverance to hang tight to God's Word and to God is so powerful in redirecting our circumstances and keeping us grounded and focusing on Him instead of our situation and our circumstances. So I hope this has been helpful, and um, if you know people that need prayer or you need prayer, pre please don't hesitate to comment and to ask for that. And just thank you for joining me. Um, I really, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to go live today. After feeling the way I did yesterday, I wasn't sure what today was going to bring, and I woke up to two messages on my phone, um, enc one encouraging me for today, and another telling me how they look forward to today. And that was God speaking to me, telling me what my day was going to be and that this was important stuff. So I hope you got something from it. And um, thank you guys for messaging me also, because that was helpful. I need encouragement too sometimes. I'm not void of, um, you know, just because my faith is strong does not mean I'm void and that I, I don't suffer or struggle or or have to redirect myself. So we all walk this together and I gain a lot from you guys joining me and sharing your circumstances and your comments and and um, you know it's it's just helpful and we have an amazing community of people and I'm so grateful for the community that we are forming. Um, if you want to join our community that is beyond just Wednesdays we do we communicate every day and you can find us at treyerwilderness.com slash community. And I'm just really pleased with the strong um, building community that we have. And that they build relationships 
um, it's a strong positive environment and I think we all need that in the day that we are walking in in society you know we need to seek the positive we need to seek what gives us joy and we need to keep calm and carry on so I'm gonna say a prayer for us today Papa I just thank you for being present today I thank you for inspiring Glenn to uh, pray for Chad and following his heart and, and your lead and we need to all remember to do that you know you give us these little nudges every day to do things for you and sometimes we question those and sometimes we're not we're, we're, we're not calm and we're too frazzled to hear you or to feel comfortable in following your lead sometimes the things you have us do are uncomfortable like our three-year journey here and our future you know to some it could be uncomfortable not knowing what's gonna happen and what our circumstances are going to be but I thank you for what you're gonna do right now and I, I praise you for what you're gonna do because I know that it will be amazing and I do trust you and I trust you with the outcome of everything that we walk and I thank you for the great peace that you've given me with that and I want to ask that you just extend that to those watching this and just to give them the calm and the peace they need for the circumstances they're walking through and to give them the courage to share their circumstances and their testimonies and be a light to others to help others realize they're not alone but also to be the encouragement that someone might need and Papa, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives and just strengthen everyone and bless everyone that's present. Thank them. I thank them so greatly for joining me and just let them know that they are a light as much as I may be a light to them. And it's just a mutual community that we have growing here on your behalf. And thank you for what you're doing with it. Thank you for what you're going to do with it. And just strengthen everybody. Give them a good remainder of their week and their weekend. And allow them to keep calm and carry on and keep them focused on you. And I ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. So guys, if you have gained something from this Feel free, free to share it with your friends, and I am on here every Wednesday, 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, and enjoy having you guys join me. Next week, we will be talking about natural health and supernatural health, and I think that you will gain a lot from it. So please join me, and you guys take care. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and if you're struggling, focus on keeping calm and carrying on. You got this, and God's got your back. So, guys, take care. Have a great day. Love you all. God bless.